everyone and welcome back. I'm super excited about today's video. I've said these words five trillion times because, like the noob that I am, I accidentally deleted this video the other day and had to redo the entire thing. So, but anyways, back to the video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own watercolor agate slice paintings. I love them. They're super fun, relaxing, awesome. They make great gifts, so if you end up having a ton lying around your house or your studio or, or wherever you paint, then just wait for the next birthday and you know what they're getting. You know, so they're easy to get rid of. Um, anyways, I also love them because when I don't feel like working on one of my larger paintings and I'm feeling a little bit stuck or whatever, these are a great project because you have very little control over the outcome. I mean, you got some say, but really the paintings just have a life of their own and they always turn out so gorgeous and unique and they really get their creativity flowing. So anyways, let's get into this video and I'll see you after. Okay, so to start off, I like to take the cardboard backing out of the frames that I'm gonna be using and outline them onto my paper. That way I know how much space I'm dealing with and I can also keep the agates as centered as possible. Then I take a ton of water and paint into my brush, more water than paint, and I start by working from the outside, working in. I love the bleed effect that it does, and it's part of the reason why I said you have very little control. Occasionally, I will start off by using like a normal mixture of paint and water if I want it to have more of a, a clean, defined look. And they can still look really pretty and realistic if you do it that way, but it's really just your personal preference. And with this one, I used way more water and less paint than even the last one. For the most part, I try to stick to um, a maximum of three different colors. For the most part, I use one or two and just do different variations of that co those colors. But I find that the more colors you're using, the way more not realistic it looks. And um, depending on the colors you use, they can turn out super brown, so be careful of that. Oh my goodness, cat. Scram. Okay, or not. Um, and as they dry, I use less and less water, obviously, because I want to keep the underlying painting as true as I can. That way I'm not messing up something that I already really like. And especially with these black lines that I'm laying in, if I had more water than what is there, there's always the possibility that that black can overtake the nice pretty blue that's underneath it. And I don't really feel like messing that up, so... As the paint starts to dry, um, I grab some acrylic metallic paint and before the paint is totally dry, I like to put the metallics in just because it gives them a little bit of bleed as well, just like the watercolors, and it makes it a lot less harsh. If you look at a real agate slice, you can see little flickers of metallic gold and silver in there. and. I just really like how it kind of brushes out and doesn't look fake or overtake it. And then once the painting is totally dry, I'll go back in and like I'm doing now, that, that watercolor is dry and I'll lay in some more metallics. And I really like doing this with the longer skinny haired brushes because I feel like you can 
you can kind of blend it out. But what I'm doing now is going through and kind of making it look like the little crystals that are on the insides of the agates that actually are defined. And I like to do these between two different color layers. That way it kind of shows like the di divide between layers of the agate. If that makes any sense, I don't know. <laughs> Doing a couple of tweaks here and there. And then um, once they're totally dry, I go back in with the same little skinny tiny brush that I used for the metallics and I pick up some black, way more paint than water, very little water, and I go back in and do some defining strokes. It just gives it some dimension and I feel like it looks less like a flat, blob of color and more like the agate itself. Sometimes I'll use like an artist quality fine tip pen, like a drawing pen for this stage. And I've also even been known to use like graphite, depending on how I'm feeling. Once it's all done, you sign your signature at the bottom or your initials or whatever. I like to do my initials, it takes up less space. And these are such delicate little paintings that that's what I prefer to do. Then you cut them out. And guys, I actually got this paper cutter from Walmart for like maybe $4. I'm wanting to say it was closer to two and some change, but I've had it for a few years and it's actually really still really sharp. No complaints here. And voila, there you go. A couple of gorgeous agates ready to be framed. Now on to the framing. So just like my paper cutter, I got these from Walmart for not a lot of money. And they're great quality, they're just super cheap. Which, great quality, super cheap, equals happy paid in. So, and... I love taking white or gray paint to these and giving them kind of a distressed look. I'm not a huge fan of that gold. I love gold, but not really that gold. Um, and with a really stiff brush, I'll paint on the white paint or whatever color I'm using. And with a cloth or a paper towel, I'll go in and wipe some of the paint from the texture. It gives it that distressed look, which I love so much. And the stiff brush actually does give it quite the distressed look too, so it kind of does have to work for you. Um, and that's why I started using these brushes. I was using a really soft brush for a while, but it just started making me mad, so. I always buy these frames a ton at a time because sometimes you'll find customers that they really love the frame but they're not just they're just not so hot on the white distressed and they want more of a traditional um, silver or gold and so I have the option of those as well and those are not distressed just spray painted pure gold or silver Working, 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 working.
voila, aren't they a beaut? Finished, gorgeous. I love them. Every time I hang up some in my house, a customer always wants to buy them, which I'm never, <laughs> I'm never opposed to that. But I'm constantly having to remake my own in my house. It confuses my husband a little bit. And look at that, the metallic in there, all shiny. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial. I know I had fun making it, so either way, success. And if you did enjoy this video, please like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. Definitely do that, and when you do, click the little bell button so you get alerted every time I post a new video. And I will see you guys next week. Thanks.